What is up guys in today's video we're going to talk about the waterbender mythic and if you should be using this instead of an assault rifle in chapter 5 season 2. As always if you guys do enjoy this video remember to give it a like, subscribe if you like to see more and comment down below what you think of this and if you're going to be using the waterbender mythic in place of an AR. So last week this item was actually buffed giving it more damage, a higher fire rate, a higher headshot multiplier, and faster travel speed on the ice projectile so it was buffed in pretty much every way and now it's actually pretty decent like the time to kill of a weapon is determined by the fire rate and how much damage it does so increasing both in the same update and the headshot multiplier makes the weapon a lot more lethal and i know a lot of people don't like messing around with this weapon because they prefer to use like guns in video games you know they, they look at fortnite as a gun game and they don't want to use this anime crap but i think it's best to look at this as a burst rifle it basically shoots three ice projectiles in a burst just like how most burst rifles would and each ice shard will deal 24 damage to the body and 36 to the head so if you hit an entire burst to the opponent's body you'll do 72 damage per burst and an entire burst of the head would be 108 damage. So the, the damage is very solid and the fire rate is not bad at all. Like you get those bursts out pretty quick. And it's also pretty accurate because it doesn't have bloom. Like it's not like it gets less and less accurate as you shoot it. A lot of the third person weapons in Fortnite, the thing that makes them so inconvenient to use is the random spread. It just doesn't make it very satisfying to use and it makes it very kind of just, just random. But this doesn't really have bloom it does have like a spread but with how you use the weapon i don't think it's going to be a problem at all it's very accurate and it also has like pretty much no recoil on controller at least in fortnite the weapons recoil can kind of vary from controller to keyboard or at least some weapons have in the past but on controller i think this weapon has pretty much no recoil and it's very accurate for a third person weapon and the reload speed on it is also insane it has unlimited ammo but it does need to be reloaded after 30 shards. So it has like a 30 round magazine essentially. And to reload it, your character just kind of like spins in a circle. Uh, so it reloads very quick with unlimited ammo. I see a lot of people gassing the fact that it has unlimited ammo, which could be a benefit in certain situations, especially competitive because you might not be able to get as much loot or in a squad, somebody can run this and not really have to worry about ammo. But like typically when I play, ammo isn't really a concern like i tend to play pretty aggressive so like past the early game i probably have a few kills and i've gotten their ammo and then i'm usually set for the game but if you do play in such a way where ammo is a concern uh then the fact that this has unlimited ammo is just another benefit you know the structure damage on it i also found to be pretty good or just like the dps against structures i i found to be nice uh to like shred cover and since the ammo is unlimited and the reload speed is really fast, you can put a lot of pressure on opponents decently fast. Uh, and, you know, if you have to reload, it's no big deal. You're not wasting ammo and you're just shredding their cover, which, you know, makes the game more inconvenient for the opponent. And if you did want to make a play with shockwaves, I found shockwaving up and then shooting this down at an opponent to be much more effective than like an AR because the AR's hip fires typically aren't very accurate. Whereas this even when you're hip firing it it's still quite accurate and so you can shoot down from the sky with decent accuracy and get some damage on the opponent and even if you didn't want to just go straight up for like the shockwave up cheese play maybe you body somebody with snipe and then you go to shockwave on them you can do some damage to them as you're like traveling to the opponent with this airbender mythic in a way that i just don't think works that often with ars I still would kind of prefer the laser sight burst SMG for this playstyle because I think it's even more accurate. If you guys didn't know, if you have laser sight on a burst SMG, it has no spread at all. So you could shockwave up and then just melt people pretty quick. This isn't as accurate as the burst SMG, but it's fine. And the fire rate also isn't as accurate as the burst SMG. So like if I had to shoot at people while shockwaving, I would prefer the burst SMG, but like I would prefer this Icebender Mythic to, you know, the Warforged AR when it comes to that. And then also this item will allow you to regenerate health if you have it in your inventory while you're in the water, as long as you aren't in storm. So with all those positives, you're probably thinking this weapon is insane and going to be the de definitive choice. It's just like flat out better than ARs. And I think for a lot of people that 
is probably going to be true, but I think this Ice Mythic is very good, but I also would rather have the Warforged AR with attachments over this, mainly just for a few key reasons. The biggest reason is going to be that I just do not feel as comfortable or as consistent aiming with the third person weapons at long range as I do the first person ARs with a sight on them. Um, and I do know that there's a lot of other players that feel this way because when we played an OG and had to use the third person weapons for that season, a lot of people were really unhappy about that and felt like their aim wasn't as good. Bloom plays a factor in that as well for sure. Uh, but just in general, I, I think I'm much better at aiming with the red dot ARs and I'm much better at kind of making micro adjustments with my aim. And that really matters if you're trying to shoot someone out of a car that's driving away, shoot someone that's shock waving away, shoot someone that's like gatekeeper dashing away. And those are Cerberus dashing. Sorry. Those are the times where I end up using my AR most. I've talked about this countless times, but like the fights where I'm using my ARs most often in Fortnite are a fight where the opponent is running from me or the, the the fights where I care most about my AR are situations like that. And in those situations, I would rather have the Warforged AR over the Ice Mythic just because I feel like my aim is personally a lot better with the first person weapons. Some people don't have this problem. They feel like they aim just fine with the third person weapons, especially keyboard players. From what I've seen, there's not as much of like a difference there. But on controller, I, I feel like I'm a lot better at aiming with a first person weapon. And that's going to kind of be the main reason why I would rather have a Warforged AR with attachments over this, uh, the Waterbender Mythic. The other reasons are a bit nitpicky and situational, but I, the main one is the aim. I feel like I'm also a lot better at playing off of cover with a weapon that has a sight on it than I am the third person weapons. And that did kind of come up a few times when I was using the Icebender Mythic for gameplay. And then finally, this weapon has an animation whenever you take it out that makes it a bit delayed. It's not like the biggest delay ever or the most inconvenient animation, but it can still matter in some situations where like timing is of the essence, you know? If I ever exit a vehicle and then try to like swap to this to either, you know, start shooting the opponent, uh, that delay can be pretty impactful because, you know, when you're getting out of a car, like those few milliseconds where they might not be sure you're getting out of the car, can be huge and this this delay can kind of grief that and then also the fact that i'm not as good at playing off of cover with this weapon as i am my first person error can also grief that another time where this would be a pretty big deal i think is going to be the gatekeeper shotgun if you don't have drum mag on it and it only has three rounds there might be times where you know you have to swap to your ar to finish the job right you maybe miss one of your shotgun shots or you don't hit good damage on them all and then you need to swap to the ar to finish and it's no big deal usually if you only need an ar shot or two but with the delay of swapping to this it can definitely ruin those fights for you or make them a bit harder than they would have been if you were just using a regular ar or an smg in that slot and the final time where i really was irritated by this delay is if I like bodied somebody with snipe and then wanted to swap to my AR to like get damage on them uh then that delay might matter also if you go grim gate you'll have a lot of fights around that area where people are just spam dashing in the water and if I need to go from shotgunning somebody to swapping to this to shoot at them as they leave that delay was also pretty annoying in those situations. And if you guys have played in Grimgate or played at any area where there's a green water and people just get it in it and spam dash, you know that like very small like milliseconds of time can also can often be the difference maker between you getting that kill and the opponent getting away. So there's a few times where the animation kind of irritated me. Very nitpicky, like I said, not as good as playing off of cover with this as I am the first person weapon. Not as big of a deal, but it's an inconvenience. And then the final thing, like I said, it's just the aim. I feel like my aim is a lot better with a red dot IR. So I think I'm going to play better with a red dot IR than I am the Ice Bender Mythic. If you do not have that problem, you feel like you aim just fine with the third person weapons, you'll probably really, really like this weapon because it, it is very, very good. And I think I'm at the point where I would rather have this Ice Bender Mythic over a Warforged AR with no sight on it at all. So I might be taking this in the early to mid game. I do feel like when I go to a weapon bunker, it's very frequent I get a Warforged AR out of there. So it's not that big of a deal to run this until I get an AR with a sight on it and have, you know, a very, very lethal mid to long range weapon that also has a lot of little intangible benefits like very fast reload speed, unlimited ammo, not very much bloom, the ability to regen health and water, 
all those little little situational things definitely do add up but at the end of the day i'm going to choose a first person like red dot ar just because my aim is a lot better that way but that is going to be it for this video as always if you guys found this helpful informative interesting remember to give it a like subscribe if you'd like to see more let me know down below what you think of this item and if you haven't given it a fair chance especially since it got buffed i definitely would recommend it i think it's very good uh and i will see you guys in the next one thanks for watching